we've got Chief for another session, um, sneaking it in between some raindrops here. I'm gonna piggyback off of yesterday. So this, this part of the, hopefully the takeaway from this little mini series is gonna be how I would approach it. You know, reading a dog in a short period of time, figuring out what I think they need to work on, what are they good at, what are they not good at, how do I assess it, and then how do we start moving forward. And so I think you gotta test at times. I'm not big on testing dogs. Um, typically, but I think when I bring a new dog in like this, I do have to test them a little bit to find out where the chinks in the armor are. So one thing I took away from yesterday's session was I did think that he got a little excited at a little bit faster pace. It wasn't real long distance, um, but it wasn't, it was marking, you know, it was thrown dummies. It was a little bit of cover. This is actually the opposite side of that cover that we were pushing him into. So intentionally, I want to go right back to that spot. But today what I'm going to do is I'm going to test him a bit and see if I lob a dummy up and over the cover and land it into the same spot that we were retrieving out of from the other side yesterday. Can I get him to push through that? Um, that's what we're going to find out. Now, normally I would say don't test your dog, set him up to succeed. If, if I weren't testing him, what I would do is if I knew where he, if he was capable of doing it or not, if I said, no, you're not capable of doing it yet, my approach would be to come over here walk through the sick, thick stuff, walk right through the stuff that I want him to pick it up in, drop the dummy, turn around and walk him back out of it and send him right back through it. That's a real easy way to kind of ensure he's successful. Um, what I want to be able to do is not have to walk the dog and lead him through the path. I want him to be able to hunt through based on his ability to push through cover. So the other thing today I'm gonna to see about doing is uh, it won't be in cover like this, but because I wanna put him into more cover, I, I started thinking about it and I'd like to use some feathered dummies so for some scent. So what I, would, what I would like to do is push that training into the cover, needing feathers and feathers would help for him from a scenting standpoint. But before I can do that, I gotta make sure he's okay with feathers. So we're gonna see about, and I don't introduce that in a hunting situation, I get it in more of a controlled situation. So we'll see if we get there today. But to start out with here, now he's, this is, this is a kind of a separation from what I call foundational type, field type, or yard type work heel work, all that stuff. I'm not gonna worry about that so much here. We're gonna worry about um, the idea of more applicable hunting stuff. So let's see, what, let's see how he does. I mean, we're experimenting here. Watch. Oh. That's two for two. Look how much more go he's got. Good boy. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Look how much go he's got when, he, when we start getting into these types of things. He's much more athletic. Good boy. I think he's more interested. Hold. Good. Hold. A little sloppy on that delivery, so let's reposition that. Hold. Good. Good. He did. He did. Now, pretty windy out. Sit. Sit. I'd go with a little bit heavier dummy if I had one right now. Sit. Let's just do it again. Oh, another terrible throw. Chief. Good boy. That's it. Come on. Good boy. Right here. Hold. Good. Good. Dead. Good. Here. Sit. Sit. Build in a little bit of, this is where the, you know, you, it's fun to do all these retrieves and all this. Ah, 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 ah. It's fun to do all this retrieve stuff, but if you don't have the ability to have foundation, you can't do them. Sit. So I firm up here. I mean, he can take this, this firming, that. Sit. Sit. So there's a good... You know, do I trust him enough to turn my back on him yet? Apparently, I maybe don't. While I'm in here, I'm gonna drop a couple dummies. OK. 
coming right back out. Good. Good. I see, he's pretty excited about this. Heel. 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 I don't want him to take that trail in. I'd rather see him take his own path in. Jeez. Atta boy. Come on. Now he switched, I think, on me. Come here, come here. That's something we would work on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, good boy. No, maybe he didn't switch. Here, hold, good, good. Whether he knows there's another dummy in there or not, I'm not sure, but he didn't see me throw them in there like we traditionally would. Gee, so we're sending them back in. Good boy. Good boy, and I like that he'll go back to the area. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Now we're gonna send him in for a third. Now this is maybe a little ambitious on our end, but good, come on. Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, good boy, hold. Good, 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 heel. Heel, heel, let's take a different angle. Heel, heel, heel. Let's start him right in the cover so he doesn't have the ability to bounce out of it. Cheap. This is a nice test for him. Can he push into that cover, especially at a different angle? Good boy. So what he's telling me is, is he believes me. Loss. Loss, here's where feathers would be really nice. Loss, loss, loss. This is gonna test his nose. That a boy, good boy. There's our good dog, come on. So lots of things I like about this. Coming back on that same path he came in on. Very good, come on. Good boy. There's a good boy. So I love how he came right back where he went in from. Good, I should have met him over there. Good boy. That's real good. What I really, so there's multiple things I take away from there. I like that he trusts me to go back in after that third dummy. Here. Now, guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop some dummies on this side. I'm gonna drop a dummy on this side. We're gonna go back through. We're gonna send them the opposite way. So I, a lot of times I like to get something developed, establish something, and then flip it around 180 degrees. So that's what we're doing here. Now the challenge for him, and this is again, we're testing a little bit, see how he does. I'm anticipating what could go wrong. And if it does, then we would fix it. But, so here's where I see a potential hiccup. He just picked up four or five right in the middle there. Now I reversed it on him. Here, here. I'm gonna send him back through. Will he be able to go through those spots where those birds were used to be? He picked up a bunch of dummies right in there. Now I'm saying go past it, go all the way back to where we just were. Nice little control here for him. Chief. Had a boy. He went right to that spot and then he said, no, I remember. Add a boy, add a little distance to it too. Good boy, come on. Come on, come on, don't get hung up. He almost hung up there. Good boy, come on, good. Good boy, hold, good, hold, good, good, hold. A little sloppy on the hold, but not bad. He's got a good position, dead. Good boy. So, a few, th here, 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 don't you. Don't lose them. Good, heel. A few things here. I'm gonna come that way, Ben. If you wanna come on this side, but we're gonna flip flop, so I don't know if you wanna. I'm gonna reverse it. I'm gonna go back into here. I'm just gonna swing back, and we're just gonna kind of extend the distance here. Um, so what, what I like about it was, he did almost hang up in the middle there. I like how he pushed through it on the way there. I like how he 
almost hung up on the way back and he pushed through it on his way back. His delivery isn't perfect. Like he's a little loose on it. I'm not 100% confident on his hold, but it's so good without the formal part. So I'm really glad about that because I think hold conditioning for him is gonna go really easily. Um, so now I'm gonna just slow down for a second. And, and this, is, this is part of the pace of training where you gotta, I, I think you have to vary it at times and, and depending on the dog. I don't wanna get, I like our momentum right now, but I don't wanna get it going so hot run two again we're gonna send them back for t to the same spot that can be tough for some dogs to do I've had a lot of dogs that we really struggle on going back to the same spot twice the nice part about him is he's like a he's pretty much a blank slate like I just don't think he's seen much of any of this type of stuff good or bad so he's real he's real moldable right now I think which is kind of exciting because I, I like a lot of the things he offers nice dog now I'm not going to do it on a day like today and this little deer trail is helping there's that's for sure um, but I I normally I would as I slowly have this set up to extend, I'd extend across the field, I'd extend into that cover. Way too muddy yet. Now I know he's got a tendency to really go, so I'm gonna hold this while I, while I cue him. Jeez, jeez, good. I should have sent him right away. I just gotta get through where he found dummies. Good boy. Lose sight of him for a little bit. That's a good test for me because you got to trust your dog a little bit. That a boy. Good dog. Come on. That a boy. Good. Come on. Good. Good. No, sir. Bad. That was poor on my part. I should have got there to help him a little bit better, knowing he doesn't have a, necessarily the best hold. So get here and help him. Good boy. Love him up. He has a tail wagon when he's got this thing in his mouth. Good. Hold that thing. I like that when you do it. Good. Good. Dead. Good. Heel. Now we're going to send him again. Let's see if I can send him better. I should have sent him when he had that zip to go. Watch. <laughs> got to push through, push through, push through. He's going to hang up where that old spot is. Let's see if he... Good boy, good boy. This is a test of his memory too, and, he, and not surprisingly, his memory's not super strong because we don't do a lot of drills like this. That a boy, good boy. There, the light bulb turned on. I could see him just pick up his pace all of a sudden. He went, oh, I remember. That a boy, good. That's a good dog. That's a good dog. So not perfect by any means, but good learning for him to realize, oh no, it's not in this center. Now get a better delivery. That a boy. That's a good boy. Good, good. Hold, hold. Good boy, hold. Good, dead, dead. That a boy. Ben, we'll come toward your, yeah, you can come on over here. Sit. Don't lose the found. Don't lose the foundation stuff in the middle. Um, I think sometimes. So when I tell him to sit, I don't want him to get lazy on that. But at the same time, I, I'm not a super stickler on the foundation stuff when I'm working on that, because I got to pick right now. What are we trying to gain? So the things I, I gained there, and they were mistakes. And 
This is perfect timing because I'm going to be doing a podcast on this later this afternoon. I watched a video that we posted of a workshop recently. It just, it just got posted. And it was hard to watch. And the reason it was hard to watch is, and I didn't really realize it, and I didn't even think about it until I watched it, but it's about putting stuff into context. So I watched this workshop demonstration thing that we did. We do it on a Saturday night of the workshops. And we go out and we do some things with the dogs. And I took two of my dogs and I asked them to do some pretty big things, bigger things than I had really had them prepared for. Um, Part of the reason we, that we do all that stuff is not, it's definitely not to like show off. It is motivating for some, for a lot of people to see, but the mistakes that get made are real valuable too. It's valuable to show my dogs making mistakes. It's valuable to show how I deal with them. So I had these dogs running these blind retrieves and they, they did it very poorly. Um, to the point where I, when I watched it in the last night on YouTube, I had this sense of embarrassment watching it myself because I was like, man, this is, this is bad. Like, if I were watching someone doing this, I'd be, I'd be pretty um, critical of it. Like, I'd be breaking it apart and all, you know, the dogs aren't very good. The handler wasn't very good. There was mistakes on both ends. And, but putting it into context, I never thought about it because when we did that, we talked about it prior to, and there's a little snippet where I say, you know, we do these demonstrations because there's value in you seeing our dogs make mistakes. It's such a short part of that video that I didn't pick it up when I watched it. Nearly the emphasis that it was when we're sitting around talking with friends and explaining the situation more thoroughly. And so as much as good of a job as Ben did editing it, I missed that message. And so then I watched the dogs and the dogs didn't look very good. So it made me feel like shit watching it. And then I thought about it all night and I thought about the idea of it and I thought, you know what? No, no, that is valuable. Yes, can we explain it a little bit better? Probably and we'll work on that. But the idea of making mistakes in training and showing it is important. It's not, I'm not, I'm not lobbying for your business. I'm not trying to get you to send me your dog. I'm being very transparent in what happens when I train dogs. And I think everybody, I don't think there's a trainer out there that doesn't have mistakes and issues that come up made by the dog. Some intentional, some not intentional. But you don't, I don't always see that. And the reason I don't see that is because I think people begin to judge them. And you know, all of a sudden their credibility is at stake. The nice part about it is I don't really care about my credibility that much from a trainer's perspective because I have a lot of confidence in what I'm doing in the end products. So that's okay, I, it, but I wasn't always like that. And I have these flashbacks of that and I had that. So today, when, she run, when he runs out there and he hangs up and he's short and he doesn't go and get that one, that doesn't look that good. You know, dog's not that, uh, dog sh should move through those old falls and he should pick and, you know, his memory should be better than that. I mean, he's an 11 month old dog and he just dropped, it was pretty simple trailing memory and yeah, yep, 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 yep. But didn't happen and that's not the way it went. I actually think he gained from breaking down and, and making that error and making the mis mistake and having it not go well. Because you saw a light bulb turn on when and Ben hopefully got it on his camera of, I lost vision of him, had to have a little bit of trust in him. And then all of a sudden I saw him increase in speed and really poof, go. And you could see, oh, I remember there's two of them over here. And this is the second one. So for him, I do think that you seeing things not always go well is not just for effect. It is very much reality, and if these cameras weren't here, I wouldn't be as patient. So I, I'm grateful for the pa I'm grateful for the cameras because it makes me a little more patient. It's an extra reminder, a little elf, little angel on my shoulder, going count to four, thousand one, thousand two. When I'm pissed, the angel says count to four, and by the time I'm done with it, I realize the time has passed, so the effectiveness of that correction wouldn't have been there anywhere, and. I can laugh about it a little bit and go, yeah, just take a deep breath. It's not the end of the world. So with him, those little mistakes are good. This little talk is good for him because he realizes a training session is on, then off, on, then off. We're going to have to sit. He's doing a really nice job, and some of the things he's doing really well is doing nothing. I think that's valuable. Chief. Now, I'm going to show you something that I... 
came back to um, came back to realize, and I wanted to share. So I was putting the lead on the dogs here, and I've talked about the idea of taking these on and off and having the dog not bolt. I think that's real valuable. I see it all the time. But he's he ducks his head. So a lot of times he ducks his head like that. So when I've tried putting leads on him, it hasn't gone as smoothly as I would like it to. Taking it off, no issues. He doesn't give me that head jerk back. Even, every once in a while, even spry will do that. So I intentionally am rubbing on these ears and the cheeks and I'm pulling and I don't want him to jerk his head out. I'll take it off nice and slow and controlled. I don't have him run off. I'm working on our little setter with that because I think she's more prone to bolt um, and her recall is not that good. She's a lot younger. Here's, a, here's how I want to work on him getting better at putting this on instead of ducking out. Take your hand and put your hand through it. And he's very good about this. So he has no problem with me coming in here and going like this. He puts his chin up for it. He says, I really appreciate that. Thanks for the nod of confidence here. So good boy. You like that. Take your hand, put it through. Good boy. And now I'm right here and off. So I'm back here and I'm good. Instead of me going in here to try to catch the dog and from putting his nose down, started out with what he does naturally anyways, lifts that chin up nice for me and then just come down. Good. Go ahead. And you do this for a while and he'll start getting used to the idea of, you know what, and, and you can do it. Just get used to this and then use that as your guide when you go to put your lead on. Good boy, heel. Now, let's get a little bit of, we'll stay right here guys for a second. Let's get him dialed in. Now this should be pretty good. It's, I mean, look at how nice these butt swings with me. Mason's done a nice job with this. Well, well, surprising you, keeping going. Come on. Now today I'm gonna add a little bit, I'm gonna tack a little bit on to the end of the session. Oh, and look, what, look who's a little interested here. Here's a smaller version, a couple little duck wings on it. Bigger version with a pheasant thing on it. We'll get to both of them. So I don't mind him. Oh yeah, that's good stuff, babe. Yeah, that's good stuff. Okay. Hold, hold. Here, here. Good boy. Right here. Good, good, good. Get down underneath there, and do the exact same thing we're doing with all of our dummies. Did good. We're just getting that delivery in. Here, here. I'm a little looser with it now with heel and all that. Here, come on, good. Right here, come on, right here, right here. Good boy, right here, good. Ah, boy, get underneath them. Hold, good, hold, dead, good, good. Here, here, I'm a little looser with it now. Jeez. Good boy. I just want to see how he had a boy. You're kind of hesitant. You're hesitant. He kind of goes like this and he goes, ah, I'll get it. Good boy. Dead. Dead. Good. Good. You. Sit. Watch. Jeez. Good boy. There. Get it so that there's no hesitation. That a boy. Come here. Good. Hold. Hold. Uh, my natural tendency with him. Dead. Dead. There, not, there. He likes to hold the feathers a little bit better even. My natural tendency with a dog is usually stand up and say hold, hold. That's what I normally do with all my dogs. But I also think, and I also have to remember, he's not my dog. So he has not seen this for months where I, where I come down and used to welcome him in. And then I started getting in this habit of bringing him up and getting that chin to come up. So I've formed that habit for those eight months prior to this. You know, he's 11 months old, so minus the teething phase, every retrieve that I make with these little puppies, it starts out where I'm really down and bringing them in, welcoming them in. I, I get down quite a bit, and then I start to get work my way up, and then I start to get these dogs to bring their heads up. So I'm, ex I'm to the point where I'm looking at him and going, you're 11 months old, you're a big dog. 
when you come in, I'm going to get nice and straight and have you come up and look at me. And he tends to do it, but he also tends to drop it before that. So I have to kind of look at it and go, well, where should I start? He's 11 months old in the beginning. That's always where I start. So I need to, instead with him, as he comes in, I don't want to come and rush in on him, but I'm going to get down a little bit and start to get underneath him. And so I will welcome him in a little bit different like I would a puppy did. Good. So let's make another little retrieve here. I liked how he picked him up progressionally. The first time, if you watch that real slow, he went up to it and he kind of, I think it's almost excitement. It's unknown. It's this idea of, okay. Now the second time he picked it, he picked it, he fumbled with it a little bit, but he picked it without that hesitation. Let's see how, how you know, two, three, four times. And what I want to do is have him just go pick it, clean, pick it, and, get, and be happy about that. I like how he's holding on to it a little bit more. Chief. Good boy. There. Good boy. That's it. Get down. Normally I say stand. Normally I would not be getting down. With him I'm going to hold. Hold. And a boy. Good boy. Dead. 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 He likes it, so I'm going to give it back to him. Good. I love how he wants to hold it. Dead. Dead. He holds the feathers better than he does a regular dummy. Good. Good boy. Dead. 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 Good. Good. Into some cover. Chief. Nice little tail action on him. Oh boy, it's in the water there. It makes it a little more challenging. Gonna have to work that nose. This is the first I've seen him really working that nose like that. That's good. Dig it out. That a boy. There's a good dog. That a boy. Now it's wet. Look how look how fussy he was picking it up. Come on. That a boy. Held it real funny because it's dripping wet, and he goes, "Man, I had to pull this thing out of the water." Guess what? That's where the ducks are, bud. Good. Good boy. So we just reposition it for him, and look how happy he is now. Dead. Good. Good. Oh, you're excited. Good. Dead. Dead. Good. Good. Go ahead. Love how he was just raring to go. That a boy. That's it. Come on. Good. Sloppy hold. Come on now. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's better. That's better. Dead. Dead. Good. Heel. Quite raring to go. I love it. I love it. Here, here. We'll fire them out this time. We'll add a little distance to it. This will be the longest retrieve we probably make with them. Yeah. And you can see he just keeps turning around going, send me, send me, send me. Chief. Atta boy. Good boy. Come on now, that's a terrible hold. Come on, come on, come on, that's a boy. That's a good boy. Terrible hold and he's gonna drop it. Good boy, that's it, come on, come on. Good, good, hold, thank you, thank you. Gotta, I gotta keep reminding myself, polish it up later, polish it up later, good boy. Dead, dead, good. Now flip this around, 180 degrees, heel, heel. Heel. I'm reading that body language and loving it. Because he's, if we watch this video versus the first day, which I think was Monday, and I'll, I will probably do this. I just want to see how much more he looks like a Labrador today than he did on Monday. Oh, we, we were at the limit. We're good now. So I'd be curious, I want to, I'm going to look back on it and go, I feel like he feels like a lab more than he did on Monday. But I'm also getting a little more comfortable with him. I'm also figuring out a little bit better how to, how to handle him and trust him. 
and, and realize what he is in it. Before I was kind of just hoping. Now I'm starting to figure out, well, you're good at this, you're not good at that. How can we work on it? And that's what I feel like we're doing right now. Now this is a long retrieve for him. Watch. Chief. But he runs hard and I'm loving it. Now I can see it. Had a boy. Now my personal thought with it, come on Meg, you gotta get past Benny. He hangs up on the camera. Good boy. My personal thought with it was on Monday, I don't know if he would have blinked on that dummy. Got a boy, come on. Got a boy. I didn't have a, I had very little doubt in my mind he was gonna pick that for me. Good. But I think it's, we're both getting confident in each other. Dead, dead, good. Hold, good boy, heel, heel. Good, I'll let you carry it nice and proud. And that's it, we're gonna be done. I'll let Ben set up right here. Go ahead, set up right there, I'm gonna finish up. Good. Let him carry that thing nice and happy. Good, dead. That a boy. That a boy. And I think he's raring to go today. I think at the end he's going, I'm ready for more. Where earlier in the week, I think by the time we got going a little bit, he was kind of checking out to say, uh, if I screw off a little bit maybe here, we can end it. To now I feel like he's kind of engaging in this idea of let's go, let's go. And so I'm, I'm getting a much better feel for him. I'm getting a better vibe of what he's capable of doing. And nice, I mean, it's nice. This is how, this is how I want progress to happen. Um, it enthuses me. You can probably sense it. I, I like doing this. I think it's fun. Um, it can get real frustrating at times. And when we hit those walls, I've, you watch any of our series, you'll see walls that I've hit with dogs. Um, at times it's taken a break. I've gotten some messages from people that have been telling me they've been working on stuff for eight months straight and missed seven days on it. And the first thing I'm gonna say to them is take a break. You're burning me out just reading this. Imagine what your dog feels like. So, and I think the people are a little burnt out with it as well. Now I, I admire the dedication. I like the commitment, but I think you gotta be smart about it. So I think you're better off when you get to a point with dogs where you feel like you're kind of hitting a ceiling, just stop. I don't mean stop training completely, maybe start working on something else. Maybe start working on something else that's gonna be able to overlay wherever it is that you are and allow you to get through that ceiling. But taking breaks from stuff is important too. I, we're not ready for a break. I'd, I'd love to have him another week. He's gonna go home in a couple days, but I think we've made progress. I think we can make a lot more progress. And for me, it's exciting because I've got his half brother who's eight weeks old and we're just starting a series with him. So it'll be interesting to me to see, you know, the differences and the progression stuff. But I think the part of this too is, and I'll be working with him here through the weekend. I don't know that I'll have these guys with the, they won't be here with the cameras, but I'll do my best to kind of document what I'm doing. But I think the, the value in this also is, from a takeaway standpoint, is he was 11 months old with, I bet you he had less than 25 retrieves in his life before he came here. So that's interesting to see how quickly he progresses in five days with someone who's working with him on that stuff. My son was kind of nervous to do it because he wasn't sure what to do next. Well, look how quickly we can get caught up. Now, we're not where I want to be, but give me, give me a couple weeks with them. I bet you we'd be pretty close to where I'd want to be anyway at 12 months old. So I, I, the, idea, the, the takeaway is don't panic. Don't feel like you have to rush stuff early. I'm going through it with that bird dog and I'm learning a whole lot about the idea of allowing dogs to do what they do naturally well and, and let them do it young get out of their way and then also get in their way when it comes to taking away some of the some of the control stuff that's going to create problems if you don't take care of it if you don't if you don't get it where you want it to be early don't let bad things fester let the good natural things <laughs> blossom and kind of bloom so good boy now that little excitement and a little you know so I counter that and I go, no, I'll just stand here for a while. I'm not going to make you sit through it, but he's not going to dictate with a little whining of, let's get going, let's get going. No, we'll wait.
So good session. It's a good session to end the week on.